Uh, so we've arrived, we're coming to the end. Is everybody doing okay? Yeah. Move around, uh, sneak around, shuffle around, do what you need to do to stay warm because our last two people um, will drive us home. Eileen Miles. Maybe uh, for, for those of us who were around in the East Village to the pleasure of getting to see Eileen on a stage full of bunting, as sparse as it is here, is uh, unmistakable. Eileen Miles is a poet whose books include Chelsea Girls, I Must Be Living Twice, New and Selected Poems, and The Importance... Let's do it again. I'll do a little, I'll speak a little louder. Eileen Miles is a poet whose books include Chelsea Girls, I Must Be Living Twice, New and Selected Poems, and The Importance of Being Iceland, Travel Essays in Art. Miles conducted an openly female write-in campaign for President of the United States in 1992. Their next book is a biography of their late dog, Rosie, who was their running mate in 1992. They live in New York and Texas. Please welcome Eileen Miles. Hi, this is such fun. And what, this has been such an amazing event, so smart and so beautiful and so moving. Um, and when, when Zoe asked me to take part in it, I think she said something about, um, like, uh, you know, act as if you're running today, I think. And somehow, somehow I took that to mean act as if you had already, that you had won, <laughs> is what I decided. So. I've written an acceptance speech. Thank you. So, so first I want to say this feels incredible. To be female, to run and run and run, to not see any end in sight, but maybe have a feeling that there's really no outside to this endeavor, this beautiful thing. You know, we don't have a single female on any of our bills. And what about two women, two women loving, or even more? A lot of women, a lot of money. Is there a message I fail to receive that the face of woman cannot be on our money? And what about that, that house I just won, that white one? When I sit there, and if I sit there, and I gotta tell you, I'm not sure I wanna sit there. Some of you might remember my first campaign. Yes, that was back in 1992. Few men have run for 24 years. 25 by the time I stand and take the oath in January to serve my country. I did not quit. I stand here with you on this beautiful, rapturous, sunny day in New York to turn around, to look back, and look at all that we have won but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to that house, that white house. We often hear these words even as an explanation of what metonym means. Are you familiar with this term? Yes, I promise you poetic presidency. The white house speaks is a metonym. Certainly that white house we speak of is not the whole government. I think like Fred was saying, it's incomplete. But it has come to be a symbol of it. And I think two things. I think whiteness, I think of the whiteness of the house, and I think of houseness. It houses the government. Now that I have won, it offers to house me now. I now officially make that white house a homeless shelter. Thank you. It is a complete disgrace that we have people without homes living on the streets of America. I have lived with them, not for long periods of time, but in the same way that I am the first president who knows what 
women feel because I am a woman, I am one. I have also eaten chicken with the homeless. I ate at the Bowery Mission. Very rubbery, very chewy chicken. Those chicken were not happy when they lived, and they are no happier being chewed on dead at the Bowery Mission, and the chewers are not happy either. So, so here's the future. Good food at the White House for all the homeless in America. You know who the homeless are? They are military men and women who fought our pointless wars, who came home after each stupid, greedy war we have waged, and they got less. Is there a GI Bill for veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan? I'm not so sure, but I don't think so. Can they buy a house? Who can buy a house? Under miles, they have bought the White House. That is my gift. The White House will house the mentally ill, outpatiented during the great President Reagan, whose head is on a stamp, by the way, like monsters get awarded America in America, and we celebrate them. We put pictures of them on our stamps. And when we say we, uh, he outpatiented the mentally ill, it means he threw them out of the house, he threw them out of the American house, and he threw out the alcoholics who do not have free and abundant and available treatment. Because this country breaks our hearts. And we will have it them too, the alcoholics. We will occupy all government buildings and memorials, housing and holding and loving the homeless and the sick and the starving. We'll do what the statue says, you know, liberty. We will take buildings and we will build buildings and our culture and our new America will begin to live. Our government needs to be in the business of living, not dying. What else is a government for? The government will become more departmental and take you in, you and your wonderful needs. We'll start with the Department of Women. Obviously, to say women matter and do matter so much and a lot, we need a distinct place in the government to, spe to specifically focus on female concerns, which is parity, mainly, reforming Congress so that if America is increasingly diverse in a multitude of ways, our Congress must represent those groups percentage-wise. That's smart, don't you think? So if most people in America are female, so should be our government, right? America is not a department store. We want to do more in our country than shop online and at the mall. Let's face it, everyone is home shopping and yelling at each other on their computers. The malls are failing, the malls are falling apart. The malls are pretty much gone. Let them go. We want to make real departments for who we really are, not shopping. We will be stalwart, we will be strong. Let's go, let's go out. We are out there now. We are out there on the high, li high line, yes. That's the way it works under Miles. <laughs> Early on, I described, and I mean in 1992, I described a Department of Culture. We will have that. We will have art in America, not just the magazine. <laughs> just for starters, we will multiply the budget of the NEA by tenfold. We will bring back CETA. That was like an art workers program we had in the 80s, but we will call it See the, see the what? I don't know. I just got elected. I haven't worked everything out. But just think of the possibilities. See the sky. See the river over there. See the Whitney. A lot of people will be walking around appreciating and we will pay them. There will also be the hear the program. The smell the program. That's probably what you're going to do early on with all those, you know, recovering veterans who don't live on the streets. Get them in on the see the, smell the, hear the programs. We're going to massively fund libraries. 
open 24 hours, and they will not be filled with homeless people because they will have homes. So the libraries will be filled with people reading and watching movies and going into the conversation rooms and having conversations and so on. Thank you. All education will be free. Trains will be free. Cars will be eventually banned. Cars are stupid. No more pumping oil. No more fracking. Everything will be driven by the sun or else be plugged in electrically. Electric something. There'll be lots of free food. A lot of archery. Everyone will be a really good shot. We'll get good at aiming, intentions, not killing. Oh yeah, and we'll send a lot of masseuses to Israel and Palestine. Everyone needs a good rub. No more pesticides here, anywhere. Lots of small farmers, an amazing number of stand-up comedians, and lots of rehearsal spaces and available musical instruments. And learning centers for people like myself who would like to play something, perhaps a guitar. <laughs> Nobody would be unemployed. Everyone would be learning Spanish. Or going to the sex center for a while, having ejaculation contests. <laughs> or just looking at porn for a while and going out into the yard and helping the farmers improve the crops. <laughs> just gardening, helping the flowers, distributing the flowers. See the flowers. When in doubt, always just be see, always just being a Sitha person for a while. There'll be a whole lot of people encouraging people to see the. We want the see the to thoroughly come back. There'd be an in increase in public computers like water, like air. Have we stopped? Have we stopped the oil and the fracking early enough to protect the water and air? We hope so. But there will be a decrease in private computers with an enhanced desire to be here, actually really here, where we are, which some would argue is there on the computer, which of course would be allowed, but being here would be cool, really cool. Thank you. Some people meditating, other people just walking around, smiling, feeling good about themselves, living shamelessly and glad. Guns would be buried, guns would be in museums, and people would increasingly not want to go there. <laughs> Gun museums would die. What was that all about? Money, money would become rare. I would have a radio show as your president. And also, I might be on television. And also, I just might want to talk to you. In the tradition of American presidents like Fiorillo LaGuardia, the little flower, I would be President Edward Miles, the woman. Changing my name very often would, pr <laughs> would probably be good. I would like that. And I would write a new poem for you each week. I just might walk around saying it, and eventually you would forget I was the president. I would go to the gym. There are people who like to manage things, just like there are people who like to play cards. And the managers would change often enough, and they would keep the, the parks clean. America increasingly turning into one big park, one big festival of existence with unmarked toilets and nightly, daily events, and free surfing lessons, and free boards, just put it back when you're done. And a good bed for everyone. I just slept in the best bed last night, and I slept on the plane. Sleep is great. Nobody would be short of sleep anymore. Everybody would w be well slept, chaotic, and loving hearted, and have all the time in the world to not kill, to love and be president. Everyone, take your turn and dance. Dance now. I love my fe fellow citizens. It is good to win. Thank you. I feel I had a bad dream last night, like the head of the FBI decided to steal the election by making up shit about me because I am female. But that wasn't true, that coup. And we are really here, undiluted, unmocked up, wide awake in America for once. 
See the, see the, see all of you, fabulous, beautiful, and your power and your hope. Thanks for your vote. I love you so much. Thanks.